when I'm working on myself, I'm not necessarily doing it to make a better album or become more famous or like more successful. Really, I'm trying to find out what it's like to be alive when you stop caring about trying to be more successful. So, um, yeah, this summer I spent 12 days in isolation at the the Tar Mandala Buddhist Monastery. So they have a basically like sequestered cabin up in the mountain and they just drop you off there and say, cool, see you in 12 days. And there's no running water, there's no electricity, there's no phone, but most notably there's no other humans. So you don't see another human, you don't talk to another human for 12 days, you don't email, it's not, nothing. And you can see how insane your own mind is. You know, um, I found like really only 10% of my thoughts are useful in any way. A good 60% of them are redundant, so that's a thought I already had. Another 30% is like a negative playing out doomsday scenarios. Where it's like, well, what if I stub my toe and then you play this scenario all the way out to like you're in the hospital and this, you know, your brain just does these silly things. So there are moments where when you, I was meditating like all day, like five to seven hours a day where you can experience reality with a quiet mind. Usually I like to use the example of a flower. Usually when I look at a flower, I go, oh, this is an iris. My mind is yammering away. This is the last time I saw an iris. This one isn't quite as beautiful. Da, 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 all day long. But when you can see the iris with a quiet mind, you can actually see it. There's not this screen of words and talking in your head. It's like seeing life in HD with a quiet mind. You, it's, the flower is cripplingly beautiful. So I had moments like this on the retreat and after where I would see the moon or I hear a bird song and it just brings you to tears because you can actually hear its depth and its, its beauty. It's a really beautiful gift. So, you know, then the practice is doing this in the world. It's easier when you're alone and it's easier with inanimate objects. It's harder with people. Because the same way you're saying, oh, this is Iris, the last time I seen it, you better believe you do that with humans. Oh, this is my mom. This is the thing she said to me last time. She yelled at me once when I was six, da 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 And the more history you have with someone, the, the harder it is to be there without chattering in your mind. And so in, in the Buddhist tradition, they call it deep listening or compassionate listening. It's when you're speaking to me and I'm not listening to what my voice and my head is saying about what you're saying. I'm just listening to what you're saying. This is a beautiful gift to give to someone, to, to listen to them in this way, because I mean, you can bet that no, you know, no one else in, in their day is, is listening to them that way.